at 23 Essex Street. Um, let's please give a big hand to the future of the profession, or representing the future of the profession, um, Council Hannah Evans. about what it was like to be a pupil barrister at the criminal bar. My message to you then is simple. Life at the bottom is tax. This isn't always appreciated by everyone. It was some surprise when I quoted the £80 I was paid for preparing and conducting a trial, not to mention my travel costs and any work I do thereafter. Since that event, I have been made tenant it was one of the happiest days of my life. Everything I worked so hard for seemed finally to have come to fruition. But after the euphoria, reality takes pretty quickly. Clowning the entire experience with the knowledge that I might not be able to do the job I love for very long at all. Things don't dramatically change, at least not financially, just because you're made a tenant. My rent payments will still be late, I'm afraid, and there will still be bills that I am unable to pay. And then, just last week, of course, the Ministry of Justice announced their so-called reforms. But I want to tell Mr Grayling something about the impact of his reforms, and just why he needs to go back to the drawing board. In the first place, there will be a much narrower variety of people coming to and remaining at the criminal bar. Those that come and those that stay will be those of independent financial means. They won't be the comprehensive school educated people like me. People who don't have parents to fund them, or partners to fund them, or savings that they can dip into. People who depended on scholarships and on loans to get where they are today. People who are also now still paying them off and struggling to pay off those loans. For many years, this profession worked hard to shed its image as the preserve of the elite. There might be more work to do, but there is more diversity at the criminal bar than in many other professions. We want our bar to be as vibrant and diverse as the public we represent. But the Ministry of Justice's proposals ensure that that won't be the case at all. The public deserves the brightest and the best when they themselves face criminal proceedings. The victims of crime deserve to have their cases prosecuted by the brightest and the best. But the brightest and the best will have no desire to come to the criminal bar if the government's proposals are implemented. They will, quite naturally, opt for a career that offers them a wage that lets them pay off the debts they've incurred in qualifying. To an extent, this has been happening for some time. I, for example, know of many people who had a wish to practice at the criminal bar, but ruled it out purely on the basis that it wasn't financially viable. However, before the MLJ reform, it was just about possible for those of us uh, who were here to get by if we were prepared to struggle. That won't be the case anymore. In spite of Mr. Brayling's assurances, the junior bar will be significantly affected by the MOJ's proposal. We take a double hit. We are affected by cuts to graduate fees in the Crown Court and also by the cuts being imposed on solicitors who pay us for the work that we do in the Magistrate Court. Where will we cut our teeth if not in the Magistrate Court? Quite simply, we won't be able to. We'll either be let loose on serious cases for which we are not yet equipped or our practices will sink before we have a chance to establish them. It's not as simple as barrister's cuts and solicitor's cuts. The junior bar is the bridge between the two. We are the future of the profession, yet we are being denied the opportunity to get there. The bar will be destroyed from the bottom up, and with the destruction of the bar 
becomes the destruction of the criminal justice system. I could go on. I could go on about the unfair, illogical, and frankly devastating impact of the reforms. But you know about them as well as I do. We know the system and we know how it will battle. We care passionately about upholding it. That's why we are all here today and not at court. It's not about the money, although I for one am unashamed to ask for a fair wage for the work that I do. We are highly skilled professionals who do a difficult job. We need and we deserve a decent wage. We are the ones in the know. It's time the MOJ acknowledged that and listen to what we are all so very clearly saying. Thank you very much.